It is my great pleasure to introduce Philip Rossington of BV and Donovan Hill. Philip, thank you very much, and please do come and share your, your thinking on the Greenland Centre. Thanks very much. Um, firstly, it was interesting about uh, we're talking about competitions. At the beginning of this competition, um, our group sat down and said, "What is this a competition that you break the rules to win, or a competition where you stay within the rules?" And that's always a, a debate. Um, for us, we in our first meeting said, "No, this is a competition that we stay within the rules, and we stay within them as closely as possible." Um, and that that then provided for us a, almost when you keep in that envelope and put all the um, elements of the design that were interesting in this, which were the car park solution, the, um, the existing structure, put the, the exoskeleton or, or um, taking off the exoskeleton. We just kept thinking it was like a Rubik, and SEP 65, a Rubik's cube that we had to keep moving around before we could really continue to salt to, to satisfy the brief. The other thing that happened in that first conversation was that wouldn't it be great in Sydney if you lived in an apartment building and the tallest apartment building and you could open your doors on the 17th floor. Um, I'd worked on building the penthouse of the Cove many years ago where all the furniture's strapped down, the windows and doors <laughs> can't be open. So our thing, and, and, and we thought that's, that's an aim for, a, it's, it's an architectural aim, but it's also something that we saw would be a marketing aim, so that you can be in a building and um, open your doors and breathe in Sydney. And that ultimately ended up in what's being marketed as the Sydney balcony. So with that in mind, we called our, our building air. So we're not in a sealed compartment in the air, um, but you're getting air. So um, we also then, we took a conservative approach and we wanted the building to be pragmatic, rational and elegant. Uh, the, that was one of the competition images which I, mean, I think you're probably already getting an idea of the building because there's similar elements in each building now. Um, so in the brief there were four elements that we, we put the building into. Um, we called it, that we had to address I'd say. One was the public realm, one was what we called the creative veranda which is the council's creative hub which hid the parking which was a, set, a very um, interesting. When, when we saw other competitors' entries after the competition, the first thing we all did was look at the car park because it was quite such an unusual um, problem to try and solve. And then obviously the apartments, which were really you know, the main funding of the whole, whole project. Um, so talking about the apartments, it was simple. We wanted to maximise the views, prioritise the living room amenity so that the living room was great, even if the bedrooms had to be sacrificed in some way. Ensure fresh air and day daylight to common spaces and the fresh air then moved into the apartments too. And um, maintaining the planning envelope, which I mentioned before. So again, this is sort of the highest grossing apartments towards the north, which was convenient because the building had a long north, north elevation. Um, and it meant, again, for SEP 65, that we'd be wanting to minimise the, the south orientation. Um, oh, there you go. That's the next point. Minimal, minimum south orientation partners. But you also see um, here that we've split the building with an axis. So one of the other things that came through this light and air was that if, the, if you got out of the lift cores and you just <coughs> saw outside straight away. So even if you were in one of these apartments, you didn't come up into a black box and then um, go into your south facing apartment that was one of the, the lesser apartments. You actually got an experience that everybody gets with the building. Uh, so, sorry. The ventilation, which I mentioned, um, and then, sorry, that's just showing how that plan is rationalised into base, basically three parts of the plan. Sorry, there's a lower floor. Okay, go on. Sorry, it seems to have my first point in this. Right, there we go. There. <coughs> Sorry, it's flicking through some of the images of the interiors, but that's that's looking at those um, lobbies, saying how we can basically come out and look straight outside. 
again at the lobby. The public realm, which was very, very similar, I think, to a lot of the schemes. So again, what were the existing over there, and then what we're proposing, which I think solutions were very similar. Again, public realm. Our main lobby of the public realm moving through, lobby coming off the, the, the created space, the creative veranda, which formed the podium, which we wanted as visible as possible, so our pleated facade allows us to have the glazing going to the street fairly clear, and, and it's shaded by the upper glazing, which, which is now a solid panel, so that when you look up, you can see activity into this council-owned space. Um, that's a separate entry to it. Then going up the creative hub spaces, again, as everyone said, wrapped around the car park. Um, and then finishing in the clubhouse for the apartment buildings, which is sort of um, the, the top area there with its own garden up there, and then the apartment starting. Um, the clubhouse facilities, going through the plans, looking at that. And again, an outdoor pool, not an indoor pool, so that you're sort of bit with a screen for noise and wind. Car parking, again, a solution where we had a double lift, one that went down into the existing basement and one that went up into the new, but into the new car parking above. So we're showing that as section. And then we sort of, so that were the brief elements. What we call architectural elements, we had the towers, which um, podium, the tower, and the screen. So the screen gave us what we called the, the ended up becoming the Sydney balcony. The po and, oh, sorry. Going too far. So, the tower, then the tower, there the, the three elements the tower, the podium, and the screen, and they all split up. That's showing you the, the tower and the screen part of the building. Then, going to the screen, this, the screen was all those things I said about light and air, but it also made the building ambiguous. We actually thought the building in the city. Um, and the balconies too in the cities can look quite messy for people, there's stuff blowing off them. So we wanted a building that was a bit more ambiguous. So, um, so it's just little sketches talking about what that building does and the, the angle of the pleat, if you like, of the facade reflects in different ways and reflects back to the street. Um, and then it's developed a lot since through that, but that was the idea that it was actually, we were working hard to not count the balconies as floor space. Um, and also not to make them a sunroom. We wanted air in them, we wanted air to move through them. So, just a series of sketches about that, about different things that we saw about the screen. Wind protection, rain protection, reflecting lights at night, and that it became something the building was known about. So, that's that feet. Podium. Um, Uh, which is very simplistic um, computer rendering, but sort of shows the podium has sub-elements within it that relate to different parts of the city. The, again, identifying this creative hub above the retail and, and residential entry. And then showing that with a bit more activity with the transparency that we're trying to get through to the activities up in the hub. And then how different parts of the podium related to specific buildings around and built and block, uh, blocks sitting on top of each other. Again, further development of how that how we're responding in ways to the, the important building to the left. Um, materials. I've um, put these in because this is somewhere where we, apart from brick, but we departed from the city of Sydney a little bit with the stone base. We looked at that corner, and there's actually brick buildings on that corner. And even though the city of Sydney does want to have create to emphasise our stone bases, we thought that the, the, that corner was particularly red in nature. And so we were looking at more that the main structure being steel and just clad in, clad in certain parts and elements in the stone. <coughs> so that was uh, important to us. The, the podium levels, as we said, different ways of using glass, and in this case, that we've used in other projects we've looked at. But this, in this case, as I said, it was really important that we got clear glass that looked up into the creative hub which would be used a lot at night time, so you'd be looking into it and seeing what the, the activities of creative hub. So that's giving that. Uh, moving through those. Sorry. 
So they're just different images around the buildings um, and the penthouse sort of levels at the end. And I just threw in at the end here, and I've got 22 seconds. The buildings have largely stayed the same. There's a couple of things that have happened. The buildings had to has slipped, which has created more interest in the elevations that we've moved away from the west and cantilevered out on the east. Um, the building's pretty similar from the rear. Um, there's been more articulation to the centre zone and the pleat starts higher in the building. The screen starts higher and the, what we call Sydney balconies occur in the new part of the building. So, um, and the tower, the, the roof element was reduced down. That's the street elements become a little bit more lively than, than our competition entry, but still all this, the elements are all still there. The creative hubs entry has been articulated more with the, awning, the way the awning's been used. The interiors of the creative hub have been developed. Again, you can see there how that clear glass and then in fact the, the, hor the, the horizontals become a solid member to enable that clear glass. The, lo the new lobby, going to cafe, the, the, sorry, the sky lobbies, this is showing when you come out of lifts that you are seeing, seeing straight outside. <coughs> And then the swimming pool deck, pretty much in the same location, just developed further. And then finishing on that side, which is what we've, the, back, the, the Sydney balcony, which is vented through here and vented through there, so that air's moving around there, so you can have your doors open for not 100% of the year, but a lot more than you, you would have been in a lot of other buildings in Sydney, uh, or anywhere in high rise buildings, without making it an enclosed sun. I think that might be the last one. Thank you.